Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, good day to you and welcome to today's lesson uh, in Global Studies class. And today's lesson will have to do with the essential question, what is location? So if you are working on your Cornell notes, please write what is location across the top and we will then move on to today's lesson. So what is location happens to be our essential question. It also happens to be our first left side question. Um, there's more than one way to define it. That may seem strange to you, but that's the truth. There are three definitions of location I would like you to know. And the first is the simplest. Location is a description of where some place is. If you have asked the average person on the street what location means, this is probably going to be what they tell you. It's going to answer the question, where is it? But there are two other ways we can describe location. The first is called absolute location. When you hear the word absolute, I want you to think exact. Absolute location means exact location. So in this case, absolute location is a description of location which includes an exact point where a line of longitude and a line of latitude cross. So if you're thinking about your XY grid in math, think of longitude as being the Y axis and latitude as being the X axis. Actually, the other way around, longitude is the X axis and latitude is the Y axis. And then there's relative location, which is how the average person describes their location. Relative location means not exact. Relative means, yeah, kind of so-so in the area. Uh, it's a description of location which uses local landmarks such as in the valley, along the river, in the mountains, etc. So when you tell someone how to get to your house, you're not going to tell them the exact longitude and latitude of your house. You're going to tell them, yeah, make a right turn on this street and I'm down the street from Safeway. You know, that's how you're going to describe your location. And, and so the average person describes location in a relative way, not in an absolute way. So make sure you have those three definitions down, and then we're going to advance to the next slide. So our next question on the left side of the line is, what is latitude? Your latitude, like I like to say, affects your attitude. Latitude lines travel in an east-west direction, but they measure the distance north or south from the equator. Uh, lines of latitude are called parallels. So there's a few things you need to know here. First of all, the lines travel east to west, okay? But they tell you how far you are north or south from the equator. So if you are here in Caracas, Venezuela, you are at 10 degrees north latitude because you are 10 degrees north from the equator. That's why this says 10 degrees north over there. These lines themselves are called parallels because if you think about your math class, parallel lines are lines that are always the same distance apart and never touch. And all line, lines of latitude are the same distance apart and they never touch. So it's important that you know what a parallel is and that the lines travel from east to west but they tell you how far you are north or south from the equator. And then there's the equator itself, which is zero degrees latitude. So the only latitude line that does not have an N or an S after it is latitude. Okay? Uh, the equator, zero degrees latitude, does not have an N or an S after it. It's just zero and it divides the Earth into the northern and southern hemisphere. We're going to talk about what a hemisphere is on the next slide. Our next left side question is going to be what is longitude? And longitude is basically the exact opposite of latitude in many ways. First of all, you need to know that longitude lines are long. They go from top to bottom. They go from the North Pole to the South Pole. Uh, they travel in a north-south direction, but they tell you how far you are east or west of a line that we call the prime meridian. 
how far you are east or west of a line we call the prime meridian, which is like the longitude version of the equator. The prime meridian, just like the equator, is zero degrees longitude, and it divides the Earth into the eastern and western hemispheres. There are two lines of longitude that do not have an E or a W after them standing for east or west, and they would be the prime meridian and the international date line. The international date line is halfway around the world from the prime meridian, and it is 180 degrees longitude. So longitude lines go from 0 to 180 degrees. And 180 has no E or W, and 0 has no E or W. And if you add 180 and 180 together, you get 360. And there are 360 degrees in a circle. And yes, there is a correlation between those things. And the last definition I would like you to know is hemisphere. A hemisphere is half of a sphere or half of the Earth. So the Eastern Hemisphere goes from zero degrees longitude at the prime meridian all the way to 180 degrees at the International Date Line, and everything um, east of the prime meridian has an E after it, and that would be in the Eastern Hemisphere. Everything west of the prime meridian has a W after it, for, standing for west or the Western Hemisphere. Uh, anything north of the equator is in the northern hemisphere. Anything south of the equator is in the southern hemisphere. And as I advance to the next slide, you will see what hemispheres look like. Here we go. Uh, these lines here show you latitude, the equator being zero, going all the way up to the North Pole at 90 degrees north latitude, all the way down to the South Pole at 90 degrees south latitude. And then here you have the prime meridian, which is zero degrees longitude, 50 to 15 degrees east, 30 degrees east. So this is the eastern hemisphere over here because it has E after it. This is the western hemisphere over here because it has a W after it. Take a gander at that for a second before I advance the slide. And now I'm gonna advance the slide. This shows you the entire planet and all the degrees of longitude and latitude. Here's the prime meridian. Here's the equator. They happen to meet off the coast of West Africa. And the North Pole is up here at 90 degrees north latitude. Uh, the international date line is over here at 180 degrees. So when you're here, you're in yesterday. And when you're here, you're in tomorrow. Uh, ask me to show you a video explaining that because that's not going to make sense to you right now. Go ahead and take a gander at that. And that is your planet. So now that I've explained all of this to you, I think I need to actually show it to you in real form. Uh, but first, Northern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere, Western Hemisphere, Eastern Hemisphere. Notice the prime meridian splits that in half. The equator splits that in half. And down here you have another map that shows you more or less what I showed you on the last map. It just shows you the continents in different colors. But now we're going to go into Google Earth, and I'm going to show it to you in a real way. So Google Earth is right here. And when you log on to Google Earth, uh, you won't always see this. Actually, usually when you log on to Google Earth, you will see it looking like this in most cases. And if you want to add your longitude and latitude lines, what you need to do is go up here to View and click Grid. That will put your longitude and latitude lines on there. And right now, I'm going to take you to Waldo Middle School in Salem, which happens to be right about here. And we're going to find out Waldo's longitude and latitude. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm pretty good at this. So I will be able to find almost exactly where we're at. No, I don't want to spin like that. Waldo Middle School is going to be right in this area here. There's the fairgrounds. This is Waldo right here. I can see it. 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to zoom in farther and we're going to straighten things out so things are facing north here. And my classroom is actually right here. This photo was taken before um, the classrooms were put in. So um, we are at exactly 44 degrees, 57 minutes, 41 seconds north latitude, and we are at exactly 123 degrees west longitude. Literally 123 degrees west longitude goes right through this classroom. You know how you can tell? It's right down here. There's the longitude, there's the latitude. So the classroom's right here. Somewhere in my classroom, pretty much like the front of the room, is at 123 degrees longitude exactly. That's kind of cool. And we can zoom out here a little bit. You can see that's Waldo. My old classroom was right there, but that's neither here nor there. Ha 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 ha. We're going to go ahead and zoom out and go to another place on the planet's surface that I know pretty well. It happens to be where I grew up in Southern California. So we're going to drag things down to California here. We're floating, we're floating, we're going past Sacramento, going past Fresno, Bakersfield. I grew up in Southern California right about here. So I'm going to take you there. I'm going to find the house I grew up in. Which, believe it or not, kids, I can do. I know that sounds weird to you, but I can. The house I grew up in is going to be right about here. I know because that's the VA hospital right there. Actually, it's going to be right about here. And this right here is the house I grew up in in Southern California. It's my mother's car on the driveway. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. See, I just took you into a lot more detail than you wanted to see. We're going to exit Street View right now. Actually, I can show you the house. That's my mom's house where I grew up in Southern California. But we're going to exit Street View right now. So you can actually see the longitude and latitude of it, which is 34 degrees, 15 minutes, 5 seconds north latitude, and 118 degrees, 29 minutes, 8 seconds west longitude. And I know that because of this down here. Okay. This down here tells you exactly where my mom's house is, and it's at 913 feet above sea level. It's right there. There's the alley behind the house. There's the trailer I used to go on vacations with. It's right there. So I've taken you two places in the United States of America. Let's go someplace in the Southern Hemisphere just for kicks and giggles. And then we're going to call this a lesson. I always like to align things to the north otherwise things start to look confusing. All right, we're going to go somewhere entirely different. Let's go to Australia. We're going to go to the Southern Hemisphere, Australia. It's right there. I happen to be fond of Australia, so why not go there? And we're going to go to Tasmania, which is an island off the coast of Australia. It's right there. If you ever heard of the Tasmanian Devil, they're talking about Tasmania. So let's go to the southern tip of Tasmania, which is as far south as you can go in Australia. No, we don't want pictures. And we're going to go down here, just because we can. And actually, let's go right here, because then I'll reward you at the end of it. So here we are, southern Tasmania, and we are at... 43 degrees, 26 minutes, 25 seconds south latitude. We are south of the equator now, and we are at 147 degrees, 14 minutes, 23 seconds east longitude. So we're now south and east instead of north and west, and we're at 11 feet above sea level. And to reward you, let's take a look at what it looks like by clicking on the 360. We're going to go in show you what it looks like, and then, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to call this a lesson. Welcome to the south side of the island of Tasmania in Australia in the southern hemisphere. It's a different world down there, kids. It looks beautiful, 
and I wouldn't mind visiting, except we don't have the money or the time. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this concludes our lesson on location. At this point, it would be appropriate for you to write a summary of your notes at the bottom of your notes, or to raise your hand and ask me and Mr. Blumendahl questions in real time. But otherwise, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Blumendahl signing off until next time on the Waldo Middle School Social Studies Global Studies YouTube Network. Thank you for listening.